Hello, this is Dr. Guy Young from Children's Hospital Los Angeles in Los Angeles, California. Welcome to this video-based educational activity on late-breaking data on hemophilia A management presented at the 2017 International Society on Thrombosis and Hemostasis Congress in Berlin, Germany. At the 2017 ISCH Congress, a large number of platform presentations and posters on approved and emerging therapeutic approaches in various stages of clinical development for hemophilia A management were presented. The following audio is part of a certified educational activity titled Assessing Recent Advances in Hemophilia A Management, What are the Key Learnings from Berlin? Access the activity and complete the post-test at www.peerviewpress.com forward slash pvc. Downloadable slides and practice aids are also available. Let's begin by discussing some updates on the various approved modified replacement clotting factors. Recombinant factor VIII FC was developed to extend the half-life of conventional factor VIII products by using the neonatal FC receptor and the endogenous immunoglobulin G recycling pathway. The safety, efficacy, and extended half-life of recombinant factor VIII FC have been demonstrated in previously treated pediatric, adolescent, and adult patients with severe hemophilia A in the pivotal phase three A-long and kids A-long trials. In addition, the long-term safety and efficacy of recombinant factor VIII FC are being evaluated in the ongoing ASPIRE extension study with results from the first and second ASPIRE interim data cuts previously published. At the 2017 ISTH Congress, Nolan and colleagues presented data on the long-term safety and efficacy of recombinant factor VIII FC in patients who participated in the A-long, kids A-long studies and the ASPIRE extension study up to its third interim data cut, which was January 11, 2016. The results of this interim analysis showed that recombinant factor VIII FC provided favorable safety and efficacy for children and adolescents adults in the kids A-long and A-long studies, as well as in the ASPIRE extension study. There were no reports of inhibitor development in any previously treated subject receiving recombinant factor VIII FC in A-long or kids A-long or during ASPIRE up to the third interim data cut. In addition, from the end of A-long and kids A-long to the interim data cut of the ASPIRE extension, the majority of subjects receiving recombinant factor VIII FC lengthened or did not change their dosing interval. Moreover, ABRs remained consistently low while maintaining extended prophylactic dosing intervals throughout ASPIRE. In addition, Posse and colleagues presented data at the 2017 ISTH conference on rebleeds and target joint resolution in patients with target joints at entry into A-long or kids A-long through the third ASPIRE interim data cut. This analysis showed children, adolescents, and adults with severe hemophilia A receiving long-term, up to three to four years, recombinant factor VIII FC prophylaxis with extended dosing intervals had sustained low target joint ABR. Moreover, recombinant factor VIII FC treatment resulted in effective target joint resolution with all subjects in the ASPIRE study from A-long and kids A-long seeing resolution of one or more target joints. Lastly, weekly prophylactic factor dose and dosing interval in this analysis of subjects in ASPIRE were consistent with those in the overall populations of the previously published A-long and kids A-long studies. Additional longitudinal data of patients receiving recombinant factor VIII FC prophylaxis presented by Oldenburg and colleagues at the 2017 ISTH Congress showed a continuous improvement of modified hemophilia joint status scores regardless of pre-study dosing regimen, presence of target joints, or age 
and worse joint health scores at baseline. This data also demonstrated continuous improvement in joint health in adults for approximately four years from ALONG to ASPIRE and for about three years in kids ALONG to ASPIRE with no dosing regimen adjustment being required, even in patients who were on a prophylactic treatment regimen prior to enrolling in ASPIRE. It was also postulated that the potential anti-inflammatory properties of the FC component of recombinant factor 8 FC may contribute in part to observed improvements in joint health. However, additional studies are needed to determine what impact FC has on joint health and long-term outcomes. Now let's move on to Ruri Octacog Alpha Pegol. Ruri Octacog Alpha Pegol, also known as BAX855, is an extended half-life recombinant factor 8 modified with polyethylene glycol, whose efficacy and safety were extensively studied during its clinical development program. At the 2017 ISTH Congress, Horling and colleagues presented data on the potential immunogenicity of BAX855. To assess the development of neutralizing antibodies against recombinant factor VIII. Data for binding and neutralizing antibodies from 243 patients with hemophilia A from seven clinical studies of BAX855 were integrated for this analysis. None of the 243 subjects included in the assessment developed inhibitors to factor VIII with a titer of greater than or equal to 0.6 Bethesda units per ml. No persistent binding antibodies to factor VIII, PEG factor VIII, or PEG or CHO proteins were observed in 238 of 243 subjects. BAX855 did not show an increased risk for previously treated patients to develop factor VIII inhibitors. No factor VIII inhibitor development in previously untreated patients were observed as per the data cutoff, but the small number of overall exposures did not allow general conclusions for this cohort. Lastly, BAX855 did not induce immune responses associated with impaired treatment efficacy. Let's shift our attention to recent updates on recombinant factor VIII single chain. Recombinant factor VIII single chain is a novel B-domain truncated recombinant factor VIII comprising covalently bonded factor VIII heavy and light chains and has a high binding affinity for von Willebrand factor. The safety and efficacy of recombinant factor VIII single chain was previously investigated in the affinity program in two pivotal and one extension study. At ISTH 2017, Simpson and colleagues presented the results of an analysis which evaluated initial and final dose assignment and corresponding bleeding rates in pediatric patients less than 12 years of age receiving prophylaxis two times or three times weekly. Dosing of recombinant factor VIII single chain based on clinical bleeding phenotype results in low bleeding rates in pediatric patients treated with prophylaxis two or three times weekly. However, differences in ABR and ASBR suggest children receiving greater than 30 IU per kilogram are more protected from traumatic bleeding than those receiving less than 30 IU per kilogram. As pediatric patients are a very active population, the authors suggest that a starting dose of 30 to 50 IU per kilogram two or three times weekly might be more appropriate. The safety and efficacy of recombinant factor VIII single chain to control hemostasis in pediatric, adolescent, and adult patients with severe hemophilia A undergoing surgery was also assessed in the affinity program. At ISTH 2017, Abdul Karim and colleagues showed recombinant factor VIII single chain provides very effective and safe control of hemostasis during a wide range of surgical procedures when dosed either by bolus or continuous infusion, with efficacy being rated as excellent in greater than 90% of procedures. As can be seen from what was just presented, we have much more data on the modified factor VIII products. 
This data has demonstrated that these products are very safe from the standpoint of immunogenicity. Regardless of the type of product, regardless of the method of modification, and regardless of whether they are extended half-life or not, there were no new inhibitor patients who presented after being switched to these products. Thus, to the hemophilia treater, it is absolutely reasonable to consider switching to one of these new modified products. The treater should not be concerned about inhibitor development just merely by switching to a new product. In addition, we have further data regarding safety. We have many years of data now with recombinant factor 8 FC, additional data with recombinant factor 8 uh, in its pegylated form, as well as with the recombinant factor 8 single chain molecule. All of these continue to demonstrate excellent safety and efficacy with respect to lower ABRs and with respect to lower inhibitor rates. In addition, for recombinant factor VIII single chain, we also noted that this product can be used safely for surgery, and furthermore, that this product can be used as well at different dosing regimens. Patients who bleed less often may be able to be treated twice a week and maintain low ABRs with recombinant factor VIII single chain, whereas other patients may need a three times a week dosing regimen. Importantly for the pediatric patients, it was noted that higher doses were more effective at preventing trauma-related bleeding. Dosing for children with this product should be aimed at a dose of 30 to 50 units per kilogram per dose, as opposed to less than 30 units per kilogram per dose. Thus, moving forward, we have a wide array of modified factor VIII products, and these can provide benefit for many patients, and switching to these products is a very reasonable thing to do if the treater believes that that particular product for that particular patient can improve on their efficacy or improve on their convenience, which may help with adherence. Now let's move on to some of the emerging modified replacement clotting factors for hemophilia A management. The results from the ongoing extension phase of Pathfinder 2 showed NHEP dosed at 75 international units per kilogram once a week, or at 50 international units per kilogram once every four days was well tolerated. In addition, more than 50% of patients in both dosing cohorts did not bleed during the 24-week treatment period. Moreover, once weekly dosing with NHEP was efficacious for preventing and treating bleeds in a subset of patients with severe hemophilia A and for reducing treatment burden through fewer injections. Now let's discuss updates on Bay 949027. Bay 949027, Democtacog alpha pegol, is a B-domain deleted recombinant factor VIII site-specifically conjugated to a PEG. The PROTECT-8 trial was a partially randomized, open-label, phase 2-3 study that investigated the use of Bay 949027 for routine prophylaxis and treatment of bleeds in adolescents and adults with severe hemophilia A. The results of this study showed prophylaxis with 60 IU per kilogram every seventh day was feasible in select patients and generally well tolerated. At ISTH 2017 Congress, Holma and colleagues reported the results of post hoc analysis of PROTECT-8 in an attempt to identify clinical predictors for an ABR of zero during once weekly prophylaxis with Bay 94 9027. The results of this post hoc analysis showed the number of target joints and the number of bleeds 12 months before prophylaxis with Bay 94 9027 could be a predictor of zero bleeds for a once weekly regimen. Now let's assess data on modified bypassing agents for hemophilia with inhibitors. Up to a third of patients with hemophilia develop neutralizing alloantibodies inhibitors against factor VIII or factor IX, causing these patients to become refractory to replacement therapy with their deficient factor. One of the two bypassing agents used in hemophilia patients with inhibitors is Eptacog alpha recombinant 7A. However, recombinant 7A is currently not approved for prophylaxis in patients with inhibitors. 
the relatively short elimination half-life, two to four hours in humans, and rapid plasma clearance of recombinant factor 7A makes a prophylactic regimen cumbersome because of the need for at least daily IV injections. Recombinant factor 7A FP, CSL689, is a recombinant fusion protein linking recombinant factor 7A with recombinant albumin that is being evaluated for the treatment of bleeding episodes and prophylaxis in patients with hemophilia A or B with inhibitors. At the ISTH 2017 Congress, Roberts and colleagues presented data comparing the single dose PK of recombinant factor 7A FP to Eptacog alpha and assessed safety of recombinant factor 7A FP in on-demand treatment and in hemophilia patients with inhibitors. In a phase 2-3 multicenter open-label dose escalation study, the first 12 patients underwent single-dose PK evaluation. Patients were sequentially assigned to one of two treatments, 90 micrograms per kilogram recombinant factor 7A on day one, followed by 1,500 micrograms per kilogram recombinant factor 7A FP on day three to 15, or 270 micrograms per kilogram recombinant factor 7A on day one, followed by 1,500 micrograms per kilogram recombinant factor 7A FP on day three to 15. Factor 7A activity was assessed using stay clot assay. Recombinant factor 7A FP had improved PK properties in patients with hemophilia and inhibitors compared to Eptacog alpha. Recombinant factor 7A FP has an approximate three-fold longer half-life and five-fold lower clearance than recombinant factor 7A. The observed Cmax after dosing at 1,500 micrograms per kilogram fell within the range between two dose levels of recombinant factor 7A, 90 and 270 micrograms per kilogram. The mean factor 7A activity following recombinant factor 7A FP dosing at later time points of the PK profile, including 24 hours, was higher than those following recombinant factor 7A dosing. In addition, recombinant factor 7A FP showed good tolerability. MOD 5014, recombinant factor 7A CTP, is another investigational, long-acting version of recombinant factor 7A utilizing CTP technology, which involves fusion of the HCG C-terminal peptide to proteins. At ISTH 2017, Hart and colleagues presented data assessing the acute safety, tolerability, PK, and pharmacodynamic PD profiles of single sub-Q administration of escalating recombinant factor 7A CTP doses in healthy subjects. The results of this analysis showed the reported AEs were observed in both active and control treatment groups and none led to premature study discontinuation. In addition, laboratory assessments supported the tolerability of recombinant factor 7A CTP treatment and no significant overall changes were observed in hematology or chemistry profiles. There was no consistent or meaningful pattern for changes in any coagulation parameter during the study attributable to the study intervention. Overall, recombinant factor 7A CTP has a promising safety profile and local tolerance following a single administration of escalating doses, 100 and 200 micrograms per kilogram, in healthy subjects with no unexpected adverse events. In addition, data on the safety, tolerability, PK and PD profiles of single IV administration of escalating recombinant factor 7A CTP doses in hemophilic subjects with and without inhibitors was presented. The single dose, open label, dose escalating study was performed in two stages. Stage one included three doses, 25, 50 and 100 micrograms per kilogram with four subjects per group. Dosing of all subjects was followed by a 7, 14 and 30 day safety observation period. Safety assessments included monitoring of adverse events, AEs, injection site reactions, vital signs, physical condition and laboratory assessments, for example, hematology, biochemistry, coagulation panel and immunogenicity. Stage two includes three doses, 200, 
300 and 400 micrograms per kilogram. The results of this study showed that among all safety parameters in all dose groups, there was no consistent pattern of any clinically significant abnormalities that were attributable to the study intervention. Coagulation panel abnormalities were consistent with the underlying disease and there was no consistent or meaningful pattern for changes in any coagulation parameter during the study attributable to the study intervention. Overall, recombinant factor 7a CTP demonstrated a favorable safety profile and local tolerance following a single IV administration in adult males with hemophilia with no unexpected A's considered to be related to recombinant factor 7a CTP. In this previous section, we looked at new products that are still in clinical development. They can be broken down into two categories. With respect to the recombinant factor 8 extended half-life products, we saw two products, N8GP and Bay94, which are being developed as pegylated recombinant factor 8 products to induce an extension of the half-life. It'll be important to see going forward with additional data whether these products can indeed be used once weekly and achieve the same level of safety as the products that are currently on the market. The other category of products that we just discussed were extended half-life factor 7a products. As we know, recombinant factor 7a, which has been around for almost 20 years, is an effective and safe product for the management of bleeding in patients with hemophilia A or B with inhibitors. However, it has a very short half-life of approximately two to four hours. And thus, to treat a bleed, often multiple doses are needed, even within one 24-hour period. Thus, developing novel factor 7A molecules with a longer half-life, such that single doses can be used to treat bleeds, or at least only one or two doses, would be something very beneficial for the hemophilia patients who have inhibitors and who require bypassing agents to treat bleeds. We see two products in development here. One is an albumin fusion protein, known as recombinant factor 7A FP, and the other is a C-terminal peptide fusion protein, known as recombinant factor 7A CTP. Both products demonstrated an extended half-life in the studies that have been performed so far. However, further studies need to be done in larger groups of patients and in a phase three format in order for us to understand how efficacious the products are and how safe they are in a larger group of patients before they can be commercially available. Now let's discuss an exciting new area, non-factor replacement strategies for hemophilia A management. Emicizumab is a recombinant, humanized, bispecific monoclonal antibody that bridges factor 9A and factor 10 to restore the function of missing activated factor 8, which is needed for effective hemostasis. Haven 1 was a randomized, open-label phase 3 trial, which assessed the efficacy, safety, and pharmacokinetics of once-weekly sub-Q emicizumab prophylaxis in patients with hemophilia A with inhibitors. 109 patients who were 12 years of age or older with hemophilia A and inhibitors were enrolled. Those who had previously received episodic treatment with bypassing agents were randomly assigned in a 2 to 1 ratio to emicizumab prophylaxis, group A, or no prophylaxis, group B. The primary endpoint was the difference in bleeding rates between group A and group B. Participants who had previously received prophylactic treatment with bypassing agents received emicizumab prophylaxis in group C. The annualized bleeding rate was 2.9 events among participants who were randomly assigned to emicizumab prophylaxis versus 23.3 events among those assigned to no prophylaxis, representing a significant difference of 87% in favor of emicizumab prophylaxis. 63% of patients in group A had zero bleeding events as compared with only 6% in group B. Among 24 participants in group C, emicizumab prophylaxis resulted in a bleeding rate that was significantly lower by 79% than the rate with previous bypassing agent prophylaxis. Mean trough plasma concentrations of emicizumab greater than 50 micrograms per ml 
were observed after four loading doses of 3 mg per kilogram weekly and sustained throughout the trial with maintenance doses of 1.5 mg per kilogram weekly. No participants tested positive for anti-drug antibodies. However, two participants had pharmacokinetic profiles with declining exposure to emicizumab that were potentially indicative of anti-drug antibodies. After 24 weeks of emicizumab treatment, factor VIII inhibitor titers remained stable or tended to decline over time in the majority of participants. Overall, 198 adverse events were reported in 103 participants receiving emicizumab prophylaxis. The most frequent events were injection site reactions. Thrombotic microangiopathy and thrombosis were reported in two participants each in the primary analysis who had received multiple infusions of activated prothrombin complex concentrate for breakthrough bleeding. Interim data from the single arm open label phase 3 Haven 2 study were also presented at the 2017 ISTH Congress. The study enrolled patients with hemophilia A with inhibitors who were aged less than 12 years or 12 to 17 if they were less than 40 kilograms, and previously treated with bypassing agents to receive emicizumab prophylaxis for 52 or more weeks. Efficacy objectives included annualized bleeding rate and bleed reduction versus historical bleeding rate. Safety objectives included incidence of AEs, including serious AEs, AEs leading to drug discontinuation, clinical lab abnormalities, and incidence of anti-emicizumab antibodies. PK objectives included characterization of emicizumab exposures, C. trough. Interim analysis included 20 patients with hemophilia A with inhibitors aged 2 to 12 years. 19 patients less than 12 years of age were included in the efficacy analyses. In terms of efficacy, 94.7% of patients had zero treated bleeds, and 63.2% did not have any bleeds. Overall, 14 bleeds were reported in seven patients. Only one was treated, and none occurred in a joint or muscle. A substantial reduction in ABR on study versus ABR from the non-interventional study was observed in eight patients included in the intraperson comparison. Seven out of eight had a 100% reduction in the number of treated bleeds, and five out of eight had a 100% reduction in the number of all bleeds and all had at least a 76% reduction of all bleeds. The PK profile of emicizumab was comparable with that seen in Haven 1, with weekly sub-Q dosing, mean trough emicizumab plasma concentrations greater than 50 micrograms per ml achieved and sustained once at steady state. Emicizumab was well tolerated, with most common AEs being mild injection site reactions and nasopharyngitis. Three unrelated SAEs were observed, with no thromboembolic or thrombotic microangiopathy events reported. No anti-drug antibodies were detected. Haven 2 continues with a total of 62 patients enrolled, including four patients less than two years of age. Patients will be followed 52 or more weeks. Emicizumab has the potential to provide a paradigm shift in the treatment of pediatric as well as adult patients with hemophilia A with inhibitors with an effective weekly subcutaneous therapeutic option. Data on other emerging non-factor replacement strategies were also presented at the 2017 ISTH Congress. For example, concizumab is a humanized monoclonal antibody targeting tissue factor pathway inhibitor, thereby enhancing thrombin generation potential. This mode of action supports pursuing an indication for use in hemophilia patients with or without inhibitors. At ISTH 2017, Eichler and colleagues presented data from Explorer 3, a Phase 1b double-blinded multiple-dose escalation trial. The primary objective was to evaluate safety. Secondary objectives were to assess pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, and the immunogenicity of sub-Q concizumab in severe hemophilia A patients without inhibitors. No safety concerns that prevent further development of concizumab in patients with hemophilia were observed. There were few AEs, no SAEs, few injection site reactions, and no anti-drug antibodies. A PKPD relationship for concizumab dose 
unbound plasma TFPI and thrombin generation was confirmed. PKs showed target-mediated drug disposition with interpatient variation. A dose-dependent effect on inhibition of TFPI and increase in thrombin generation potential was observed. Moving on, Fetusaran is a subcutaneously administered investigational RNA interference therapeutic targeting antithrombin as a means to improve thrombin generation and promote hemostasis in patients with hemophilia A or B with and without inhibitors. Interim data from the phase one study showed fetuzuran was generally well tolerated and administration of monthly fetuzuran led to dose-dependent antithrombin lowering, thrombin generation increase, and decrease in bleeding frequency. At the 2017 ISTH Congress, Posse and colleagues presented interim safety, PD, and clinical activity of fetuzuran in a phase two extension study, which included patients with hemophilia A or B with and without inhibitors previously dosed in the phase one study. Patients received monthly fixed subcutaneous doses of fetuzuran, 50 milligrams or 80 milligrams. 33 patients were enrolled and 28 patients continued dosing. In terms of safety and tolerability, six patients reported SAEs, 70% of patients reported an AE, the majority were mild or moderate in severity and unrelated to study drug. ALT increases greater than three times the upper limit of normal were observed in 11 patients, with most improving without dose interruption. All were confirmed HCV antibody positive. No thromboembolic events were reported. No instances of drug-induced anti-drug antibody formation were observed. Approximately 80% antithrombin lowering with low interpatient variability was achieved with once monthly subcutaneous dosing. An exploratory post hoc analysis of bleed events demonstrated a median ABR equal to one for all patients. 48% of patients were bleed free. 67% of patients experienced zero spontaneous bleeds. All bleed events in patients were successfully managed with replacement factor or bypassing agents. Based on these and other results, the phase three ATLAS trial was recently initiated. Gene therapy is also under investigation for the treatment of hemophilia A. At ISTH 2017, Posse and colleagues presented interim data of an ongoing phase 1-2 dose escalation study of AAV5 factor VIII gene transfer, BMN270, in patients with severe hemophilia A. Fifteen subjects received a single intravenous dose of an AAV5 vector containing the B-domain-deleted factor VIII gene, BMN270, at one of four doses. Safety, efficacy, immunogenicity, and other endpoints are being evaluated. Factor VIII activity plateaued by 20 weeks with median levels within the normal range, 89 to 122 IU per deciliter, post week 20. Individual factor VIII levels ranged from 19 to 164 IU per deciliter. The median analyzed bleeding rate for subjects previously on prophylactic therapy, n equals six, declined from 17, range of zero to 40, before dosing, to zero, range of zero to seven, two weeks post-infusion through last follow-up visit, with five subjects experiencing no bleeds. Median annualized factor eight infusions declined from 139 to zero, two weeks post-infusion through last patient follow-up. Mild grade one asymptomatic allidine aminotransferase ALT increases were reported in all seven subjects. Peak ALT levels range from 59 to 95 units per liter, and six subjects had normal ALT levels, with the seventh less than 1.4 times the upper limit of normal. At the 2017 ISTH Congress, Rottensteiner and colleagues also presented an update of the development of a gene therapy candidate product that is built on AAV8, the prototypic liver-specific AAV serotype, and an expression cassette that confers strong and liver-specific expression of B-domain-deleted refactotype variant of factor VIII. Although initial testing of several factor VIII gene therapy vectors 
failed to identify a candidate expressing sufficient amounts of factor VIII in factor VIII knockout mice. Thus, a screening program for improved factor VIII coding sequences using a combination of available codon optimization algorithms and manual sequence editing was initiated. This approach resulted in identification of SHP654, a vector that expressed 74-fold higher levels of factor VIII than the corresponding wild-type nucleotide sequence. SHP654 proved to be also producible with high yields. An improved buffer allows higher strength formulations and prevents adsorption onto contact materials and ensures stability of the vector. IS analysis of SHP654 showed measurable yet minimal integration, less than 0.01%, with no indication of side effects as neither clonal outgrowth nor preferred integrations in or next to genes previously implicated in HCC formation was observed. These features of SHP654 make it a promising drug candidate for factor VIII gene therapy with the potential to effectively treat hemophilia A patients by doses in the 10 to the 12th vector genomes per kilogram range. A global phase 1-2 safety and dose escalation trial is set to commence. So in this section, we discussed even more novel approaches to treating hemophilia than we have previously discussed. Let's first discuss the non-factor replacement therapies. We discussed three products, emicizumab, concizumab, and fetuzuran. These three products are aimed at improving hemostasis through novel mechanisms. Emicizumab is a bispecific antibody that, in a sense, mimics or replaces the function of factor VIII, and thus it is effective in patients with hemophilia A with or without inhibitors. Concizumab is an anti-tissue factor pathway inhibitor antibody, thus improving hemostasis by eliminating or decreasing an inhibitor to coagulation. Fetusaran is an anti-antithrombin molecule that reduces the production of antithrombin and thus, like concizumab, improves hemostasis by inhibiting an inhibitor of coagulation. The product that is furthest along and has completed the phase three trials is emicizumab, and it shows tremendous promise as a future therapy, in particular for patients with inhibitors, where we have a significant unmet need for a product to eliminate or reduce bleeding via a prophylactic method. This product eliminates bleeding to the same degree in patients with inhibitors as factor VIII products eliminate the degree of bleeding in patients without inhibitors. We have simply never had a product that was that effective at preventing bleeds in inhibitor patients. In the near future, this product may be licensed in the United States, Europe, and elsewhere, and may be a tremendously effective therapy and really change the way we treat patients with inhibitors. It should be pointed out, although not discussed here, that this product could be used in patients without inhibitors as well. However, that data has not yet been presented, and only until we see that data can we assess whether or not this product can be safely and effectively used in patients without inhibitors. Concizumab and fetuzuran have only been in the phase one, two phase so far. They do, however, offer the potential for effective prophylaxis in patients with hemophilia A or B, with or without inhibitors. And the future trials will definitely demonstrate whether or not that will be possible. The advantage of these products is that they do not need to be given intravenously. They can be given subcutaneously, and they have a very long half-life in comparison to factor products. In addition, we discussed gene therapy and several gene therapy trials that were presented at the ISTH Congress. Gene therapy remains the holy grail for hemophilia treatment. In other words, it offers the prospect of a cure. What was presented at the ISTH Congress were two studies on factor VIII gene therapy. One was the BMN270 trial, which included several doses of the vector genomes and demonstrated normalization of factor VIII levels in most of the patients. Most of the patients did have transient elevations in their transaminases, and whether or not that proves to be a problem long-term remains to be seen. 
So far, however, this product seems to be safe in other ways and for sure is effective, as was demonstrated with significant reductions in bleeding and significant reductions in consumption of clotting factor concentrate. The other product that was presented, SHP654, is still in the preclinical phase, although in the preclinical phase it is demonstrated to be effective and safe uh, in the mice models and is now ready to move to a phase 1, 2 study in humans. In conclusion, a surge in clinical trials is paving the way for transformative treatment options for patients with hemophilia A. Data presented at the 2017 ISTH Congress exemplify this evolving paradigm shift. For example, new data on available and emerging modified replacement clotting factors continue to highlight efficacy and safety of these approaches over the long term. This has paved the way for developing bypassing agents with extended half-lives in patients with hemophilia A with inhibitors. In addition, non-factor replacement strategies such as emicizumab, concizumab, and fetusiran provide promising treatment options for patients with hemophilia A with and without inhibitors. The emergence of so many potential treatment options for patients with hemophilia A provides an exciting opportunity for refining and improving our current management strategies and therapeutic goals. That ends our discussion for today. I hope you found it informative and useful for your practice. I encourage you to download the slides and practice aids from this activity, which include summaries of additional data not discussed during this program. Thank you. This activity has been jointly provided by Medical Learning Institute Incorporated and PVI, Peerview Institute for Medical Education. Thank you for listening. Download materials and complete the post test for instant credit at www.peerviewpress.com forward slash PVC. This activity is supported by independent medical educational grants from CSL Bering, Genentech, and Shire.